soft shell pasta. Very popular, loved by all of you, but do you know that you can take it to the next level? Yes, I'm showing you today with two amazing new ingredients that you never used. Come on, let's make it together. Hi and welcome to Vincenzo's Plate, the place where you get to learn how to cook homemade Italian recipes. And today is stuffed shelled pasta time. Very popular, loved by all of you, but do you know that you can take it to the next level? Yes, I'm showing you today with two amazing new ingredients that you never use. This pasta, it's easy to make, very similar to cannelloni, but they are different because the pasta is different, the filling is different, the sauce is different, you are different, eat differently. Come on, let's make it together. So to make conchiglioni pasta, the stuffed shell pasta, we need very simple ingredients for the sauce. We want to use garlic cloves. I'm using three small garlic cloves. You can use two if you like. A nice bunch of fresh basil. Passata, best if you use homemade passata. If you want to learn how to make it, watch the video up here. And extra virgin olive oil. And just a little bit of salt. Very simple ingredients. For the filling of the shell pasta, we need 400 grams of nice fresh ricotta, but don't get the smooth, soft ricotta. It needs to be a little bit hard. And we need three tablespoons of grated pecorino cheese, one buffalo mozzarella, and I'm really showing off here using this beautiful artisan buffalo mozzarella. You can use fior di latte mozzarella, any type of mozzarella that you want, but I chose buffalo. 300 grams of spinach. Now, I'm using baby spinach because I already had baby spinach in the fridge. If you want to have a cheaper option and quicker, what you can use is the frozen spinach. Then we need one egg, some nutmeg. Oh, nutmeg is very important. Salt and pepper. Last but not least, the most important ingredient, the shell pasta called conchiglioni. Now, these are the biggest size I was able to find here in Sydney. I'm sure there is a bigger than this, so go for it, okay? But it also comes in a smaller version, which means you have more to eat. <laughs> First thing to do, guys, is to make the sauce, okay? You wanna add the extra virgin olive oil. And be generous with the extra virgin olive oil. Then we crush our garlic. I always like to crush my garlic. I don't want to have, you know, chunks of garlic in my mouth. So you crush the garlic. And cook for a minute or two. After about a minute or so, make sure the garlic is not burning. You want the garlic to be golden. We can add the passata. Hopefully it's all made. Put the passata in here. Stir, stir, stir. Make sure the garlic goes everywhere. Put a nice amount of salt, pepper. Now you wanna put the basil in there with your hands. It is so important, the basil, the flavors of the basil will stay on your hands. We'll go straight in the sauce. Just break it as you want. You can leave the whole thing in there. As you can see, I'm very generous with my basil. And now we let this cook for about 20 minutes. You don't need more than that. Cover it and see you in 20 minutes. Now our pasta takes 14 minutes to cook. What's happening now is we're boiling the water. We're adding one tablespoon of rock salt or sea salt. Now on the pasta packet, this is saying it takes 14 minutes to cook. Now what I recommend you to do is to cook it for 30 minutes and a half. So take it out. 30 seconds before the cooking instruction, okay? So if the pasta says 10 minutes, nine minutes and a half, you take it out. You want them to be al dente, which means to the tooth. The water is boiling, and what we do now, we're gonna add the pasta. See you in 13 minutes and a half. Now, very easy, we just need to make the spinach or ricotta filling. So, here I've got the spinach, which you'll be surprised. So it looks like it's a lot, but they will reduce so much they, they will basically almost disappear. So you just put it in there, and within maximum two minutes, this spinach will reduce so much. 
So we are having 400 grams of ricotta for 300 grams of spinach. I have to say, even if you use 200 grams of spinach is enough. I just like my feeling to be full of spinach. You wanna make sure you stir because at the bottom they are cooked. You also wanna cook the one on the top. There's no need for you to add any salt or anything else because we're adding the flavors to the ricotta mix. It's just over three minutes and spinach are done. If you decide to use the frozen spinach, you still need to do this process, okay? You just need to put the frozen spinach in a pan and quickly cook them. It might take a couple of minutes just because they're frozen, you know? And here we go. 30 more seconds. Look how much they shrunk. Look how much the spinach shrunk. There's nothing left in there, look. See, the beauty of spinach. I actually made a spinach pasta on my YouTube channel. You have to learn how to make spinach pasta. It's so delicious. It's so easy. So please watch the video on my channel. Now, when do we know when they're ready? Well, basically, you just want the spinach to be very soft and you want to be able to mix it very well with the ricotta. You want the spinach to go everywhere. Now, this is where the fun begins. We're gonna put the ricotta in a bowl. And just before we add the ingredients, make sure you break the ricotta. The reason why we do this is that this will help to combine all the ingredients with the ricotta, okay? It's gonna take you like two minutes, seriously. Okay, the ricotta is like that. Now we're gonna add all the spinach. Guys, as you can see, I've used a lot of spinach. I've been very generous with the spinach. And again, mix. When I mix with the ricotta, I mix, 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 mix. I like to do this just before I add the other ingredients. I make sure my ingredients are making love together. A lot of spinach. Oh my God, I'm so generous. Now we need to add a little bit of nutmeg. The nutmeg really brings some beautiful flavors. We're gonna add the pecorino cheese. I'm gonna put a, a little bit of salt, just a pinch, and a generous amount of pepper if you like pepper. If you don't like pepper, just put less or don't use it at all. Now we give a mix. The pecorino is really important. You can also use parmigiano reggiano. As you guys know, I'm a big fan of pecorino. I always have pecorino in my fridge and that's my choice. But parmigiano will do the same job. So basically mine today is like spinach with ricotta. I use so much spinach. Last but not least, we put the egg. And now we give a nice last mix. If you want, guys, you can do this all together, okay? You just put all the ingredients together and just do this once. I just like to make sure my ingredients make love together properly. I wanna take my time to do this. Guys, if you don't use the egg, the ricotta will actually dry up too much in the oven and the egg actually protects your ricotta, your spinach, your filling, and helps to cook better. Here is our mix, ready to go in the pasta, ready to go. Okay, now it's time for us to assemble the ingredients. The pasta is ready, cooked to perfection. Now what we want to do, we want the pasta to get cold a little bit. So strain the pasta out and let it rest for a couple of minutes. As you can see guys, the pasta grows, it grows a lot. It's almost double in size. And the reason why you want the pasta to be al dente is because you don't want the pasta to be too soft, otherwise it won't hold the shape. You wanna keep the shape of the conchiglioni. Let the pasta rest for a couple of minutes so we will be able to touch it because at the moment the pasta is way too hot. If you want, you can actually keep it in the fridge for a few minutes. Guys, after 20 minutes, I saw this beautiful and ready. Look at that. Nice, it's perfect. This is gonna be the base of the pasta. And also I'm gonna add this inside the pasta, right on top of the cheese. You got one more thing to do, to assemble this dish. Now, turn the oven on, 180 Celsius, because we're gonna cook this pasta in the oven for about 15 minutes. First thing to do now, the assembling part, we put the sauce at the bottom. Most of the sauce goes at the bottom. Okay, so make sure you're generous, but keep some sauce to put inside the pastas, okay? So here it is. Not only this will avoid to the pasta to get stuck at the bottom, this will also give extra flavor to your yummy pasta. Now it's very, very easy. What we do is we get one pasta, we put a nice generous amount of ricotta and spinach mix in there, put as much as you want, then you place it in the pan. This is a relaxing, beautiful job, okay? Let's make sure there is no stress in the kitchen. Just take your time. 
and do it with love. So there you know, guys, for this dish, I'll actually use half packet of pasta because if you use the whole thing, it's a lot. Now, is there a different type of pasta that you think you can serve with this pasta shape? Yes, you can actually make with anything you want, you know, any sauce, any cheese pasta that you want. Uh, you can put bechamel at the bottom of this if you don't want to use tomato sauce, you can make it cheesy. And you know, it's a normal pasta you can use for anything you want. So when you put the conchiglioni in this pan here, just make sure you put them next to each other, you know, they want to be next to each other. And then we put whatever is rest in the middle. And here is the last one. Now this is the situation. I finished the filling. I've got a little bit of pasta left here. It is a shame. I don't know, add some sauce in there if you want and serve it tomorrow, you know, don't throw this out. Or just make extra ricotta just in case. If you think that this is already full of flavors, well, you're wrong. What we need to do now, we need to add more flavors. So, put the tomato sauce on top. Trust me, this extra tomato sauce that we put on top, it will make such a huge difference. Now you need to add a mountain of pecorino cheese everywhere, guys. When I say a mountain, I mean it. A mountain of pecorino cheese, pecorino romano or parmigiano, if you like. Last but not least, we're going to put a buffalo mozzarella on top of each one. Guys, please do not show me the shredded mozzarella. I hate shredded mozzarella. I don't want to see you using shredded mozzarella anymore. Buy the real deal or just don't use it. This is a dish you must find in the best restaurants. If they don't have it, ask them to make it for you. Oh, guys, just make it yourself. That's the reason why you're watching this video, right? Because you love to cook, you love to spend time in the kitchen. And if you don't love spending time in the kitchen, I'm gonna make you love spending time in the kitchen. Yeah, with this delicious, delicious food. And now we're gonna bake this at 180 Celsius for 15 minutes. You don't need to cover it. Just the way it is, straight in the oven. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the Vincenzo's Plate Conchiglioni Pasta, the stuffed shells pasta, the one you have been dreaming all your life. Guys, it's easy, done in maximum half an hour. It's something that you will love, everyone will love. You can keep it in the fridge for the next five days. What more can I say? Come on, make it. As you can see, guys, here we have the beautiful mozzarella perfectly melted on top. What we want to achieve here, we want to have a little bit of crunch on top, and here it is. That crunch was created when we put it in the oven. We want soft pasta in there. We got the pecorino, which disappeared in the mix, in the ricotta field in the sauce. We have enough sauce at the bottom just to let the pasta swim. We got this pasta all connected to each other. All we need to do now is to separate them and serve and enjoy. How do we serve this pasta? First thing to do, let's put some sauce at the bottom, okay? This is gonna be the base of our pastas. I'm going to place the shell one at a time, just like that on top. One, two, and three, like that. Look how beautiful these babies look. Like I always say, simplicity at its best. Just put some basil leaves for decoration, enjoy it. Guys, the mozzarella di bufala on top and that pecorino takes this to the next level. But how do we know? I haven't tried it yet. Let's try it. And then I can tell you if the buffalo mozzarella and pecorino make the difference. You know what time it is? It's eating time! I'm gonna use a knife to cut it. Look at that, look at the inside there, look at the inside. Look at this beautiful pasta. Make sure you get the sauce and eat it. Hmm. You heard the crunch, a little bit of crunch. Moist, soft pasta, beautiful flavors. <gasps> Sebastian wants some. Yes, Sebastian, I'm coming. I'm gonna put it in the blender for you. Then we have the beautiful sauce, the spinach and ricotta. Yes, I have to call it spinach and ricotta because there is more spinach than ricotta. It's just sublime. The pecorino disappeared. It's there, but you can see it. And the mozzarella, the buffalo mozzarella. <laughs> um, mm, 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 mm. I love eating. It takes 30 minutes to make, but honestly, three minutes to eat it. Open a bottle of wine and enjoy it. I love you. Mm, mm. I'm gonna eat half of this pan by myself. Thank you so much for watching this episode. We will see you in the next Vincenzo's Plate video recipe. Mm. E ora si mangia. Vincenzo's Plate. Buon appetito. And please, guys, 
write a comment below. Let me know if you enjoy this pasta. Thank you.